Good morning. It is some time o'clock. I can't see anything because I have the headset on right now. It is probably what? A little bit after 10 on Sunday, May 15th, 2016. I'm Christiana Ellis and I just got up. This is five more minutes. So yeah, HTC Vive. Um, I actually don't have it turned on right now, so I'm just seeing blackness. But I, I just thought it would be fun uh, to uh, to do a video in the headset once. I did. I promised someone on Twitter that I would do at least one like this. So, uh, so yesterday, day one, getting it all set up and everything. Um, given that my expectation was that it would be potentially very difficult, lots of times. Um, setting up technology with the PC is uh, complicated and can be rife with driver problems and configuration errors and so on. And uh, I only had a very minor hiccup. I need to adjust the straps a little bit more still. Minor hiccup wherein um, when it was time to uh, connect one of the touch controllers, um, it said one of the two touch controllers needed a firmware update. And so that was weird. Like, why would one of them need it and not the other? But I guess, you know, they're manufactured at different times with different firmware. Um, sorry, I'm, like, I'm fiddling with it now. I felt like I had it set yesterday, but now it feels different. The fit is different. My head shrank over the uh, while I was asleep, apparently. Uh, yeah, so it's weird doing this when I can't see. <laughs> Um, what was I just talking about? Yeah, okay, so the, one of the f two touch controllers needed a firmware update. Now, that process was actually super easy. It just took one, connecting one of the mini USB to USB cables to the charging port on the controller and plugging that into a USB port on the computer. And uh, it, you know, and then a little option just popped up to update the firmware, and it was just super simple. Um, so that was easy, but what it did is interrupt the room setup process because that's what I had been about to do when it said that it couldn't because I needed the firmware update. And so it took me a little while to figure out how to get back to that part. Um, and the, the way that I tried to do it the first time was essentially to restart the setup program but then that gave me an error because it was trying to redo things that it had done already. And so um, basically I just Googled really quick just to make sure where I needed to start the room setup from. Um, turns out there, uh, all I had to do was go to Steam and turn on Steam VR and it would have just popped right up. Uh, but you know, I didn't know that. So the process would have gone very smooth except for the firmware issue. Um, just because, uh, uh, and, and even that was minor. So like the, the little setup thing estimate said it, it estimated it would take 28 minutes to do the total setup. Um, it took me longer, but I was also kind of doing it at a leisurely pace, leisurely pace. Yeah. And kind of doing other things at the same time, taking breaks and so on like that. And then the adding the, um, firmware issue. But on the whole, given the difficulty of doing some other things that I've done on the computer, like upgrade the graphics card and stuff like that, simple compared to considering all the stuff that we're setting up. So like, uh, just so I can aim the camera at things, I've got two base stations, one set up right there. Oh, look, you can actually see, see the little dots lighting up there. Those don't show up to the naked eye, but they show up to my webcam, apparently. And then across the room, you see the far one on the top of the shelf. Um, and then, of course, the touch controllers and the headset itself. Um, so the, the, those base stations, though, what I've discovered is that the IR waves that they put out... Um, they actually, uh, they, they mess up my uh, remote control for my cable box. So I have to still figure out what's the solution to that. Um, it's easy enough to just unplug them. Um, uh, 
uh, when I'm watching TV instead of doing VR. But uh, it seems like there might still be a yet more elegant solution. I the the fact that I keep fiddling with the straps here is deceptive because I actually used it quite a bit yesterday and it felt very comfortable. So um, it's not that the straps are hard to adjust. It's just I, I feel like I need to readjust them or something. Um, maybe just because I kind of used it um, throughout the day yesterday. Not like all day, but um, because I used it a bunch, it, it kind of shifted out of position a little bit. So I need to readjust them. Um, but it fits over my glasses pretty well. Like, I'm actually not wearing my glasses underneath it right now. You know what? I'm just going to not wear it right now. It's weird doing it without my being able to see. Anyway, I think I got the point across. I put it on without my glasses there, but um, I was actually using my glasses under it yesterday. Um, the two things that I played a little bit of, um, I played... Um, um, I played uh, one of the things that comes with, uh, bundled with the, the Vive, which is Job Simulator. Oops, I moved my microphone away. Job Simulator 2050, where it's, it's kind of a silly game where the idea is that robots have taken over the world, but now they have museums for um, human history, and they they let you, you're, the idea is that you are a robot, and you are going to go learn about human history by doing a simulation of what it was like to work a human job like office worker or restaurant chef and stuff like that. And um, and so basically you're just standing in a little area and you and it'll do things like um, uh, you have to make a soup. So you have this little oven and you're using the touch controllers as though they're your hands and you can grab things with them and uh, you know so you're making various foods um, and you have uh, like you're, you're given sort of tasks but you're free to do kind of them silly however you want or throw stuff on the floor or throw things at the other uh, robots and uh, it's all it's all very silly but what's fun about it is um, it just like again like it's the VR aspect of it it all just works pretty well like you see a thing and you go grab it and you pick it up and you're just like yep it's right there now what's interesting in terms of presence in a game like that is that it's very cartoony looking right you know i mean the 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 style of the graphics um almost looks like you know play it playstation 2 or something like that except that you are in the world like so you have this immersion this feeling of presence in that kind of a world where the world just looks like that it's an interesting distinction with uh with vr uh the idea of what good graphics look like on a non-vr game and what produces presence in a vr game it's really pretty cool because even as cartoony as it looks, I caught myself a couple, a couple of times acting as though it was really real. Like, um, like in the office worker one, you're in a cubicle and when you stand up, you can look over the cubicle wall. And I, I, I was going to go like, look over the wall into the next one. And I caught myself going like this, like I'm going to put my hands, on the top of the cubicle wall, but of course it's not really there. Um, I also almost tried to set my um, touch controller down on a table which was in the game, but not real. Um, and uh, um, <clears throat> one of the other things that I would repeatedly do is um, if I dropped something in the game, you can bend down and pick it up with the touch controller, but I more than once tried to kick stuff with my feet before remembering, oh wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> It's not tracking my feet. Um, and let me think. Oh, the other thing is I I get disoriented in real space as in I no longer know which direction in my actual apartment. I, I get that disorientation almost immediately. <laughs> you know, I'll be f turning whatever. Usually my only clue is um, uh, if I get close enough to the wall, it brings up this little... Um, overlay 
in the computer that's just like a wireframe of the space that I traced out during the room setup um, so that I don't, you know, bump into a wall, which is really handy. Um, and uh, so that <laughs> is super helpful, believe me, um, because more than once, even still, um, like I backed into my bookshelf once and because um, I was trying to, move, <laughs> that's another thing that happens is that frequently something will be coming at you in the game and I find myself just instinctively backing up because it's, I don't want it to hit me even that I'm realizing, oh wait, yep, still, still not really there. Um, uh, and then I did also thrust the controller out once and, and, and knock my X-Wing toy off of my bookshelf too. Um, but by and large, the, the, the system works really well at keeping you, uh, uh, keeping you from running into walls and stuff, which is really handy for the room scale VR stuff. So I played some of Job's Job Simulator, and then I also played some of The Lab, which uh, is free, even though it's it's not like bundled with the Vive. You have to download it separately, but uh, it is free, and it's made by Valve, and so it's less of a game of its own and more like uh, like a mini game collection or a tech demo collection, where it's basically a bunch of different things that you can do with the VR but demonstrating a lot of different cool aspects of the setup. And it's really good. So even though I call it like a collection of tech demos, that should not convey the, present, uh, the impression that it's not polished as hell, because it is. Um, and that was super fun. There was some really cool stuff in there. Like there's one where it's like you're standing on like this mountainside and, and in that one, the graphics are not cartoony, like in Job Simulator, like it's now like there is a little bit of what sometimes they call the screen door effect, which just like imagine you're wearing goggles that have like window screen um, in them. Like you can see through a window screen, right? But if you're if you if you're really close to it, you can kind of see the, the little pixels, right? But it's only like if you're concentrating on that. It's easy to just stop seeing that altogether. And it really feels like, oh my gosh, this looks like I am out standing on this mountainside. And it's only if I like get really, really close to like some texture or something, um, like put your face right up against it, that it starts to, uh, you realize, oh wait, yep, that is a texture on a polygon. Um, and it's got this cute little robot dog thing that you can like throw sticks for him because you, you go and you pick it up with the touch controller like you're picking it up. And I mean, it doesn't feel like a stick in your hand, but you throw it and then the little robot dog goes and gets it. And, <laughs> and it's very cute. Um, there was another one where it was like a bow and arrow game um, where you're, you're holding the bow with one and you have arrows in the other and you, and it goes where you, and it, it's paying attention to both like how far do you pull it back, where are you aiming, um, and that feels really good. In fact, like I'm, I'm doing it now. My shoulder's sore from doing it yesterday. Um, I had another one where your touch controller becomes this little drone, and it's kind of like a shoot 'em up but you're moving around in 3D space. And, you know, to shoot stuff and avoid all of the bullets coming at you, you're really kind of going... Moving around like that. Um, there was a couple of other, I'm trying to think. There was one where it was like some of the robots from Portal. And that one was less interactive in the sense that you're only doing a few things in terms of manipulating them with the touch controllers. And it's mostly pretty scripted in that regard. But um, it still looks really cool. And it has uh, one of the little co-op robots from Portal and, um, and Gladys in it. Gladys is big in VR. <laughs> she shows up and it's so cool, you guys. Um, and then there's a few other things in there too that are good too, but I'm not gonna just itemize and list all of them. Um, so short version is, it's really cool. I'm excited to try more stuff. Um, in particular, two games that uh, came bundled with it that I haven't even tried yet are Fantastic Contraption, where uh, my understanding is you sort of assemble weird little vehicles and have them do challenges, I think. Uh, and tilt brush, which is like, like 
paint for windows only in 3D space, where you select kind of a brush and then you're creating a 3D shape with the touch controller. So it's like you're, you can draw a picture that's like all around you and then walk around in it. And that sounds really fun. Um, so uh, I'm very excited with it so far. And I will, oh man, 15 minutes again? Ramble, ramble, ramble. I will talk to you guys tomorrow for five more minutes. How about that?